Is coronavirus good for capitalism? Ever since it appeared in China in 2019, these images have dominated news and probably your TV screens. And as the virus spreads across the globe, prices for basic things like hand sanitizers have skyrocketed. And people are celebrating the gift of toilet paper? What does this say about capitalism and the free market during a health crisis? And how is this going to impact the fight against coronavirus? As more cases of coronavirus started appearing in the U.S., people flocked to supermarkets to buy cleaning and sanitizing supplies. And then this started happening. We found two large bottles of Purell, you know, that hand sanitizer, on sale for $299 on Amazon. That make, make that $300. Hmm. That size normally sells for about $9 a bottle. This is known as price gouging. Well, price gouging can happen any time, obviously in the context of uh, coronavirus or any public health crisis. It's a corporation or individual who sees an opportunity to make a lot of money. Um, so they raise the price. And it's a problem, as this clip from CBS shows. When I wanted to pay, she said $50. And I think that's disgusting, and they're taking advantage of people right now. What you see happening in the last month or so, particularly in the US, but also globally, is a an acceleration of disaster capitalism, the sort of thing that always happens in um, a crisis. So, for example, price gouging of face masks or um, hand sanitizer. Price gouging can really mean anything of an individual or corporation who really sees an opportunity to make a killing. In the US, a lobby group representing brands like Clorox is asking the Justice Department to step in and stop retailers from increasing prices on things like hand sanitizers. Other places like Italy, which has had the biggest outbreak of coronavirus in Europe, have begun investigations into soaring online prices for hygienic masks. Capitalism is what makes price gouging happen in a way that nothing really stops price gouging. Those who are opposed to it try to put in place some kind of regulation, but the problem is that the horse is already bolted. Too often, I think, particularly in very um, hyper-capitalist societies, the US, the UK, Australia, many Western societies, there's not often much of a social net to um, help people who are the most disadvantaged. So the system doesn't really seem to care or think too much about avoiding these problems happening when the next crisis inevitably hits. But of course, this isn't the first time people have tried to capitalize on crises. And that's where disaster capitalism comes in. It's a term originally coined by author Naomi Klein. Disaster capitalism is people or corporations making money from misery. That could be from war, disaster, aid, mining, any area where there's a way to make profit from other people's misfortune. Different forms of disaster capitalism take place in the U.S. For example, in 2017, in the lead-up to Hurricane Irma, the Florida Attorney General's office received more than 8,000 complaints related to price gouging on items like gas and food. Some argue that price gouging is what capitalism always is, so it's a question of the degree to which it happens. And some have argued that disaster capitalism is almost a contradiction in terms of capitalism by definition exploits people. Now, some economists who favor a free market ideology believe that price gouging is actually a good thing because it discourages people from hoarding supplies. If you've gone out recently and seen these signs, you might be inclined to agree. The problem is, it's not that straightforward. I mean, the idea that price gouging is, is good for society and, and, the, and the poor need to really appreciate the fact that they're being ripped off seems like an absurd argument to me. I mean, if hand sanitizer is a matter between life and death, and experts suggest that washing hands is the most effective way to deal with this virus, if you can't get access to it or it costs you $50 or $100, how is that a good thing? I think that the idea that um, price gouging is sort of good for society in kind of benevolent way is probably said by people who can afford frankly, these items. And this exposes a deeper issue in the US than overpriced hand sanitizers. The class issue is key here, where people are being told, you have to stay home from work because you might have a cough or a cold. And obviously for a public health reason, I think that's a good thing. But the practical economic reality of doing so can be devastating and people often have no choice but to go to work. So unless you have a competent safety net and sick leave, and for that matter, an understanding employer, you got a problem. Many U.S. states do have laws that prohibit increasing prices of basic necessities during a state of emergency. And during this coronavirus outbreak, some states are trying to combat price gouging. I want businesses to be aware that you could lose your license 
for price gouging. Amazon has said it will suspend the accounts of anyone who engages in price gouging. It will also remove or block products that are unfairly priced. But exploitative business practices bring something else to the spotlight, the free market and how it enables different forms of disaster capitalism to take advantage of the public during a period of chaos. The free market off the leash is a catastrophe and you could argue that the US has so little regulation around these kind of practices. But in general, there is a far greater ability for the wealthy to escape the worst effects of climate change or a virus or some kind of global health catastrophe. But it's enough people that I think you really show the effect of a capitalist system, which is not just off the leash, but in fact, in my view, and my work over the last 10 years on this issue, doesn't really care that the poorest of the poor suffer. With the virus now in many states in the US, the conversation isn't just about price gouging. It's about how one of the wealthiest countries in the world is woefully underprepared for a health crisis, from a lack of affordable health care to budget cuts to public health. It's also about how the system itself is broken. There's definitely more awareness that this, the system is stacked against us, us being the majority of the population. So now the question is what you do about that. To me, it's a bit of a no-brainer. I think having a much greater government services and, and public options for health, education, otherwise, certainly is a way to manage that. I think it definitely shows that a society cares about people who are not just the wealthy and therefore they can uh, be given proper health care and education for their kids, etc. It does worry me that the way you fight disaster capitalism is you A, make people aware of it, but then you actually provide viable alternatives to it, which does not mean cutting public services. It's the opposite of that, or it should be.